Hello. Right. <coughs> I'm ready now. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to start off with. I was going to do some kind of, you know, magic-y editing stuff, but I thought, you know, we're just going to do this simply. Um, thank you for the comments on the Rise of Skywalker trailer from these two. When it focuses, there we go. So thank you to you two for commenting. As you see, I have liked both of them. So thank you for commenting on the reaction. Now, um, there is a YouTube channel called New Rock Stars, and they do some pretty detailed and awesome trailer breakdowns and explainings. Um, Oh, no. And that is what we are going to be watching today. The breakdown of the C-3PO scene, I believe. Going by the name of the video. So let's see how this goes, shall we? A three, a two, a one, let's react. Let's start again, shall we? Because I didn't turn the volume up. Let's try that again. Three, uh, two, oh, and a go. Welcome back to New Rock Stars. I'm Eric Voss in Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker released a final trailer, and I feel real bad for joking after the previous trailer that red-eyed 3PO had just inhaled the wrong stuff at Pasana Burning Man because apparently that redness is droid blood. Kidding aside, I got an actual theory for what the hell is going on with 3PO here, which I will get to as I break down this trailer <laughs> shot by shot for all the Easter eggs and visual clues that you might have overlooked. Spoiler warning in case any of my speculation ends up being too accurate or if my excitement is too genuine because I'm a little boy when it comes to these things. Alright, let's get started. It's an instinct. The trailer opens with a calm nature shot, a lush jungle, followed by, surprise, Rey dropping a helmet and running from what looks like a combat remote droid. Now, past Star Wars new trilogy trailers have opened with similar reveal shots. For the Force Awakens trailer, it was a calm pan across the Jakku desert, then... <sighs> Then, and if you remember from the last Jedi trailer, it was a calm close up of a boulder, and then. <gasps> Ray Hand! This jungle appears to be the same location Ray hugs Leia in other footage and the place where she caught her lightsaber in the previous trailer. Some are saying we could be returning to Endor, since the ruins of the second Death Star appear to factor into this movie's plot, and Endor was the nearest surface in that splash zone. This helmet that she drops might be similar to the helmet that Luke used while training with one of those droids. But this helmet looks a lot different, actually kind of similar to the Rebel helmets in Return of the Jedi that. on Endor. Now, it's not clear why she is running from a Jedi equivalent of a speed bag. Though, based on the first teaser, Rey alone trying to outrun threats seems to be something she'll be doing a lot in Rise of Skywalker. There's this glorious mid-air match cut as Rey leaps, landing now inside what looks like the Death Star wreckage that we've seen other shots of. All this evokes the first images we saw of Rey in The Force Awakens, acrobatically scaling the inside of a wrecked Star Destroyer. Notice that Rey wears this backpack that we saw her carrying in the previous trailer as she gazed out of this wreckage, perhaps as a breathing apparatus that allows her to dive into submerged regions, or just a fancy pouch to contain what she is seeking here. More thoughts on that as we move on. The Force brought us together. We're not alone. Good people will fight if we lead them. In this clip, Finn looks through binoculars on what looks like the desert planet Pasana, maybe spotting the pursuers who chase them on that skiff and other shots. Then Ray runs along the ridge of this jungle planet, and while Endor seems like a place that could show up in this movie, Endor's terrain was that of the Northern California Redwood Forest. And this looks more rugged and tropical, like uh, just over that ridge could be Wakanda. This just doesn't look like the same planet as the coastline that faced the Death Star wreckage. Now, Poe gives a speech to a group of resistance pilots. He's joined by Finn, Chewie, 3PO, Lando Calrissian, my man. You can also see a Mon Calamari behind Lando. That is actually the late Admiral Akbar's son, Aft. 
Tab, who has just introduced the Age of Resistance prelude comic. Also among them could be Wedge Antilles, who, according to Dennis Lawson, will also return for this film. Notice that several of the fighters appear to be consoling each other with hands on shoulders. This moment could be Poe sharing the news that General Leia Organa has passed. <laughs> a lot of reasons to cry. There's also a shot of Rose Tico, and behind her is Dominic Monaghan's character, a still unnamed Resistance fighter. Rose is still wearing the medallion necklace that she shared with her sister, the bomber Paige Tico, who died early on in The Last Jedi. Poe, Finn, Chewie turn to face us, and Poe has a black armband wrapped around his arm, which could signify warning to the late General Organa. The three stand before this orange fighter. According to toys, this is Poe's new X-Wing, or Sex Wing, probably Finn's nickname for it. What? They share jackets. And I just realized that Sex Wing sounds like Sex Swing. Now let's swing on to the next clip. People keep telling me they know me. No one does. Cruiser brushes the treetops, and then Ray stands atop the trench of the Death Star wreckage as huge waves crash over her. The detail of this shot is insane. The cannon behind Ray is streaked with rust, like a capsized battleship poking out of the water, exposed to the elements. Also, as the rain and ocean spray soaks Ray, the droplets of water sizzle and vaporize as they hit her lightsaber blade. Kylo approaches, Ooh, ready to cool. duel, and note that Ray no longer has that backpack that she appeared to have in the other shots of this location. Perhaps whatever she found she is hidden from kylo in this moment and that's the treasure that they're fighting over moving on long have i waited and now i love that yes Dozens of TIE fighters close in on this flat earther's wet dream, an icebergy disk planet. Both bases have structures built on top, smokestacks it looks like on the top base, and elaborate skyscraper structures carved into the ice on the bottom. Actually, I'm wondering if this shot is actually upside down. And the longer version will rotate to reveal this as a bottom side, which would be a pretty cool visual trick by J.J. Abrams. Because if you think about it, TIE fighters are symmetrical. Oh, we wouldn't know which way we were oriented. It's space! Now, I'm wondering if this is actually the new ice planet, Kijimi. Kijimi. Whatever. The surface of which I think we have seen in other footage. Kijimi. You know, I'll try to piece all this together in a bit. But first, we gotta talk about this gnarly Sith throne. When the lightning Whoa. illuminates it, see that it's made of stone, perhaps from the volcanic rock of the ancient Sith temple on Mustafar? Mm, not sure. But Lucasfilm creative art manager Phil Sostak tweeted confirming that this throne's design was based on Ralph McQuarrie's 1981 concept art sketches of Palpatine's throne and Return of the Jedi. Next, there's a shot of a Star Destroyer rising from this ice Ooh. surface. Oh my god. Now, this is part of the fleet of old school Star Destroyers we saw in the previous trailer. Notice the spherical shield generator. That's old school, baby. We've also been speculating how or why anyone could have built a fleet of massive Star Destroyers in secret without the New Republic knowing about it or the First Order wanting to use it. Perhaps the answer is in the ice. A backup fleet of super Star Destroyers hidden in the ice waiting to be activated. Their rise could account for the cracking ice planet surface that we've seen in past trailer shots. But then we move on to the most detail-packed shot of this trailer, the Resistance Fleet, Avengers assembling. Pretty much every ship in the shot is an Easter egg. I'm going to point out all the ones that I spotted. But first, before we continue, thanks to our sponsor Raycon for helping us make this breakdown. Raycon makes these sleek, comfortable wireless headphones that are way more affordable than any of the other options out there. They come in a range of fun colors and patterns and a variety of fit options. So they're both stylish and discreet. No uh, dangling wires or stems that, you know, in the past have left me feeling tangled and cross-wired. Kind of like 3PO in every damn movie. Raycon's latest model, the E25, is their best. I had a comment yet. once about eating on camera. I got told not to. Seamless so that's why I'm back in the way. Base and a more compact design that gives you a nice, noise isolating fit. It also comes in new fun colorways. You just pair them with your device, and you pop them in, and you're good to listen to whatever music or podcast you want. Just like Snoop Dogg can, who I am told is obsessed with these. It's one of the infinite things Snoop and I have in common. Raycon earbuds start at about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds on the market. They sound just as amazing as top audio brands that you know, and click on the link in the description below to get 15% off your order. 
Okay, back to the resistance fleet Easter eggs. Front and center, obviously that's the Falcon, but to its immediate right is the ghost from Star Wars Rebels, appearing again after its little cameo in Rogue One, also from Rebels behind the Falcon's radar dish as it lowers in a frame, which that radar dish has been reattached. That is a shadow caster. Now also visible in this frame, I think that's Raven's Claw? For it was the nerd house in the Harry Potter world, the Raven's <coughs> Claw was Kyle Katarn's ship in the Jedi Knight video games, as well as the Outrider, that would be Dash Rimdar's YT-2400 playing from the Shadows of the Empire games. In the distant background, I think there are some Looker Hulk battleships from the Clone Wars era, maybe some Mon Calamari cruisers, and among all this, you should also be able to make out a U-260D U-Wing, the Corvus from Battlefront 2, a Pelta-class frigate from Clone Wars, a whole bunch of Nebulon B frigates, some MC-75s, a Hammer oh and Corvette, my that was one that was God. number one, red and green nose consular class ships, the Rahatak from the Battle of Endor and Return of the Jedi, a Bellian class heavy freighter, that was a ship that Han and Chewie were initially on in The Force Awakens, a Defender class Corvette from the Old Republic games, a Lancer class pursuit craft from Rebels, and recently revealed in The Last Jedi, an MG-100 Star Fortress SF-17 bomber, a Vac Vior class cargo frigate, and a Free Virgilia class blunt coaster. Let me know if you spotted any others here. And with the shot of Ray, Chewie, Poe, and Finn, and 3PO in the Falcon Pocket, we move on. Oh. What, uh, what are you doing there, 3PO? Taking one last look, sir. At my friends. Okay. It would lose stuff today, this like he was upset. Ray Kylo battle on the Death Star wreckage, followed by a quick shot of a massive explosion in space. Now, in the foreground of that explosion, you can make out a triangular shape of a Star Destroyer. Hmm, hold on to that thought. But then after we see the boat that Ray uses to make it out of that wreckage, our hearts become wrecked thanks to <coughs> 3 po Rewiring the back of his head is this little dude. His name is Babu Frick, an Enzelian droid Babu Frick. works with the Spice Runners of Kijimi. One of them, presumably, is Zori Bliss. Carrie Russell's character, who appears in the scene. Poe, Ray, Finn, and Chewie, BB-8, Dio, and R2 are all watching on here. So obviously this is a very significant moment, but probably the most significant person in the scene. The background of this droid repair shop, a deactivated battle droid for the prequels? Remember those? Where are you taking them? Roger. Anyway, 3PO appears to be saying goodbye to his friends. But why? All might not be lost, folks, because perhaps 3PO could be doing what LV-37 did with the Millennium Falcon in Solo, a Star Wars story, interfacing. She's interfacing. Plugging the droid CPU into a ship to become its sort of operating system. So the way the Falcon's personality is technically that of Fleabag, maybe now 3PO's personality could live on in another ship, maybe the ruins of the Death Star 2, or one of the new Star Destroyers that also seem to be tucked away on Kichimi by plugging 3PO into one of those ships. Maybe they will try to use that ship's weaponry on the other Star Destroyers. Look folks, if we're gonna have to say goodbye to 3PO here, what a way for the guy to go out! And it would leave R2 as the one survivor of all nine films to tell the tale to the next generation. The bleeps and whistles that all translate into extreme profanity. <laughs> on to the next clip. <laughs> Here, Poe, Finn, Chewie blast their way down a hall, perhaps on board of one of those Star Destroyers. The shot choreography here is thrilling. The low angle with First Order Stormtroopers dropping in front of us. It's as if the camera is like on a rolling mouse droid. So cool. BB-8 punctures a yellow gas canister as a flare to throw off their pursuers on Pasana. Lando and Chewie are back in the Falcon. Lando piloting it, just as he did in the Battle of Endor. Then a Y-wing barrel rolls up to a Star barrel Destroyer, rolls. which has a massive cannon on its underbelly. Perhaps these new Star Destroyers are each equipped with with a Death Star level super laser. Which, That's... think about it, unleashed all over the galaxy? That would make this entire fleet an uncontrollable apocalyptic threat. Moving on. That's a bit OP. Come on. That's... That's a bit unfair. See, what is that? This section features Finn, Poe, BB-8, and Janna, that's Naomi Aki's character, in a cavalry charge. Now, I'm not sure what these galloping horse creatures are. Some have said they look like the Vordok of Endor. Well, I'm not sure. They appear to be on the outer hull of a Star Destroyer. So, wherever they are, it must
must be low enough within an atmosphere for them to breathe, or maybe since Leia Mary Poppins did through space, it's just crazy now. Ray and Kylo face each other in this familiar spot. This is the ruins of the second Death Star throne room, where Palpatine presided over the duel between Luke and Vader. And I think the thing Ray is seeking is some remnant of either Vader or Palpatine that is left in this location. Because after this is the most interesting shot of the trailer. Ray and Kylo's lightsabers shattering the statue, which to me looks kind of like a Vader shape. Notice that Kylo's helmet is back on, fused back together, as we saw in the other trailer footage. But more importantly, Ray is holding a stone dagger. What? The Horcrux. Now, some are saying this could be the Dagger of Mortis, an ancient mystical weapon from Star Wars The Clone Wars. According to lore, it's connected to the godlike beings, the father, the daughter, and the son. It's a fascinating Sunday school story. We'll see if Rise of Skywalker will draw on the lore presented in the animated series to this extent, but this dagger could also be the way Palpatine lived on, like his essence perhaps possessing it as an old force. And the only way that he can that be killed. Was clearly pushing Star him to a giant. This white tinted setting is unlike any that we've seen in these prequels. Though a giant thing doesn't kill him. Does evoke the set design of the original trilogy. Maybe focus. Containing Palpatine's or Vader's old Sith tokens, and Kylo and Rey are fighting for that dagger with their blades shattering all the other artifacts in this chamber. Then there's another angle of the cavalry charge that shows an X-wing and a B-wing dogfighting with some Tie fighters on the dozens of star destroyers on the horizon. Notice that all of them appear to have that um, bulge, that big weapon. We got a close-up on their undercarriage earlier. They're all packing it. And then before we move on, Rey backs away in fear, looking up at what's that in the foreground, folks? That looks like a black hooded cloak. I think we're looking at Palpatine here now. This person and is seated high above Ray based on its motion. He could be either in a floating chair or in some kind of mech droid form. Perhaps Ray's journey to recover the artifact awakened Palpatine on Kijimi along with the remnants of his scorched earth contingency operation Cinder, which consisted a backup fleet of super star destroyers, in which case it could be all on 3PO of all people to save us. On to the final clip. The Force will be with you. Who is that? Obviously, that's Leia. So, Ray, apparently on the icy planet's surface, based on those lightning flashes, lightsaber drawn, here's the inspiration voices of two mentors. Luke Skywalker assures okay. her, the Force will be with you, and whispering always is the voice of Carrie Fisher, Leia. Now, J.J. Abrams said that he would be repurposing footage and audio of the late Carrie Fisher with her family's blessing from past films, The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi, as opposed to using the effects magic to try to resurrect her. This exact word, always, might have been from an alternate take of this line from The Force Awakens. I've always hated watching you leave. And now I'm more upset. What do you think 3PO's fate will be in The Rise of Skywalker? Comment down below with your thoughts. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EABOX. And if you enjoy these breakdowns of all the details that you missed in Star Wars stuff, one big project that we've been wanting to do is a rewatch series of all the past films, the classic original trilogy and the prequel trilogy. One way that you can help us fit this series into our overpacked schedule is by becoming a patron of our new expansion to New Rockstar's Digital Studios and RDS. With enough patrons, we will be able to do classic Star Wars breakdowns in the weeks leading up to Rise of Skywalker. Plus, patrons will get access to an exclusive monthly bonus breakdown. If you can help us out, check out the link in the description. And a big thanks to our past patron, Jake Storm. Thanks, buddy. Thank you for joining me. And hey, if 3PO is interfacing with the ship, let us hope that his AI ends up getting transferred to the Falcon. Because just the thought of Anthony Daniels bickering with Fleabag forever and ever and the coolest ship ever, yeah, it's, just, it's just too perfect. <laughs> Hey, so there we go. The breakdown of the Rise of Skywalker trailer. Many, many cool things. Many, many just cool things, really. A lot of things I didn't quite actually get the first, well, two times I watched it, because I was just too excited, as the, as the man said. A little child when it comes to these things. <laughs> anyway. I will leave that with you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the new intro for Star Wars related videos. I I think it works better. Mainly because I found the music. And I love the music. I'm just going to say that now. Uh, and also sorting out the the font to make it match the, right, the Star Wars logo. So 
<clears throat> hopefully you guys enjoyed and I will see you next time this was quite a long one I didn't realize it was nearly 20 minutes long but <coughs> I will see you next time make sure you leave a like comment any suggestions on reactions and don't forget to subscribe and thank you for the people that have subscribed recently we are now at 1250 so thank you very much for that um, and I will see you next time so Peace out, boys.